jahure mana inanda nanda na abaya charanada vindure jahure mana inanda
worship the lotus feet of the son of Namida, which makes one feel wet. Having obtained this rare human verb, cross over this ocean of worldly existence through the association of saintly persons. Both in the day and at night, I remain sleepless, suffering the pains of the heat and cold, the wind and the rain. For a fraction of flicker's happiness, I have uselessly served weekend and miserly men. What assurance of real happiness is there in all of one's wealth, youthfulness, sons and family members? This life is a suffering like a drop of water on a lotus petal. Therefore, we should always serve and worship the divine feet of Lord Farish. It is the desire and great longing of the Kodindadas to engage themselves in the nine processes of bhakti, namely hearing the glories of the Lord Farish, enchanting those glories, constantly remembering him and offering prayers to him, serving the Lord lotus feet, serving the Supreme Lord as a servant, worshipping him with flowers and incense, and so forth, serving him as a friend, and completely offering the Lord one's very soul. Jai Govinda Jai. Radhe Jaya Jaya Madhav Dai Te. Radhe Jaya Jaya Oh, yeah. 
Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Sakaya, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. The reading from Haisai's uh, Transcendental Diary. After much delay and frequent requests, now nearly, nearly at the end of Prabhupada's stay in Nailor, the deed of a gift for the two parcels of land has finally been produced. But it, but is it a gift? But it is a gift with many conditions. Scrutiny of the fine print revealed several dubious clauses. Prabhupada sat on his, at his desk as Gopakrishna and Mahamsa Swami read out their details. One clause insisted that on the, on the two-acre plot, a temple, a a comparative religious studies library and a med meditation hall be built. Prabhupada shook his head. He declared that as far as we are concerned, we have no use for such things. A temple with the deity of Radha Krishna is sufficient because they are the only objects of our meditation. Moreover, the Vedic knowledge is complete, so what is the need for comparisons? Other conditions were more explicit. They declared that if the project is not completed within three years, then the land <clears throat> and whatever stands on it will be turned over to another charity, charitable organization, such as a certain mission based in Calcutta. It means Ramakrishna. As, as for the seven acre plot of land on which the house and garden stand, the document stated that, that if ISKCON did not take possession and utilize it fully with one year, of the death of the sisters, then it will be also be turned over to some suitable charitable organization. The same mission in Calcutta was named. Everyone agreed it seemed clear there was some kind of plan to have ISKCON begin the development of the land, then by some ploy, its timely completion will be prevented, thus giving reason to have it seized and handed over to this Calcutta <coughs> mission. It would be difficult to thwart any building project by somehow or another, it would not be difficult to thwart any building project by somehow or other cutting off the supply of cement which the government controls and rations. With this information, many pieces of the puzzle now fell into place. The Calcutta mission is also well known as the Murgi 
chicken mission because its members keep large chicken farms and are known as meat eaters. These two sisters raise chickens and eat meat. The mission also has a consistent formula for the layout of their ashram, a temple, a comparative studies library, and a meditation hall. So obviously they're not going to... Should I finish the whole section? Or leave it for the next? Continue or not? If you like. If I like, I'd like to stop. I don't want to read about it. Now I preach on mission. And they have meaningless activities. Okay. <coughs> give up. Can't, this, there's no more stick. The spot is right here. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Yatayoni yata bijam Yatayoni yata bijam Yatayoni yata bijam Swabhavena bala baliyasa Swabhavena baliyasa Swabhavena baliyasa Lava nimitam avyaktam Lava nimitam avyaktam Yakta vyaktam Aviti Uta Yatayoni Yata Bijam Yatayoni Yata Bijam Swabhavena Baliyasa Swabhavena Baliyasa Bolo Yatani Mittam Avyaktam Yatani Mittam Avyaktam Because, because 
avyaktam, unseen or unknown to the person. Vyakta avyaktam, manifest and unmanifest, or the gross body and the subtle body. Bhavati, come into being. Uta, certainly. Yatayoni, exactly like the mother. Yatabija, exactly like the father. Svabhavena, for the natural tendency. Baliyasa, which is very powerful. Translation of purport by His Divine Grace, Sri Bhakti Vedanta Swami Sri Prabhupada. The fruit of activities a living being performs, whether pious or impious, are the unseen cause for the fulfillment of his desires. This unseen cause is the root for the living entity's different bodies. Because of his intense desire, the living entity takes birth in a particular family and receives a body which is either like that of his mother or like that of his father. The gross and subtle bodies are created according to his desire. Report. The gross body is a product of the subtle body. As stated in Bhagavad Gita 8.6, Yam Yam Vapi Smaram Bhavam Tyajati Ante Kalevaram Tam Tam Evati Kunteya Saratad Bhava Bhavitaha. <coughs> Whatever state of being one remembers when he quits his body, that state he will attain without fail. The atmosphere of the subtle body at the time of death is created by the activities of the gross body. Thus the gross body acts during one's lifetime and the subtle body acts at the time of death. The subtle body, which is called linga, the body of desire, is the background for the development of a particular type of gross body, which is either like that of one's mother or like that of one's father. According to Rig Veda, if at the time of sex, the secretion of the mother are more profuse in those of the father, the child will receive a female body. And if the secretion of the father are more profuse than those of the mother, the child will receive a male body. These are the subtle laws of nature which act according to the desire of the living entity. If a human being is taught to change his subtle body by developing a consciousness of Krishna, at the time of death, the subtle body will create a gross body in which he will be a devotee of Krishna. Or if he is still more at perfect, he will not take another material body, but will immediately get a spiritual body and thus return home back to Godhead. This is the process of transmigration of the soul. Therefore, <coughs> instead of trying to unite human society through packs for sense gratification, that can never be achieved. It is clearly desirable to teach people how to become Krishna conscious and return home back to Godhead. This is true now and indeed at any time. <coughs> So, this is our choice. We want to remain in the material world or we want to go to the spiritual world. And in order to go to the spiritual world, we have to be perfect. Perfect means not that we become God, but we become perfectly free from any desire for sense gratification. Therefore, uh, it's not something cheap. We have to immerse ourselves in Krishna consciousness. But we have the advantage of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's uh, method of, of spiritualization, the chanting of the Holy Name, which is very powerful and especially adapted for this age. Mahaguna. The one great quality is this Krishna Kirtan can bring us the desired result, can bring us perfection. Again, perfection means that we're perfectly in harmony with the will of the Lord, not that we become God or something. So this is our goal, and we would think it may be impossible, like the Christians. They gave up on the thought of being perfect. They accepted Christ was perfect, but they, could, they didn't think they could be perfect. So they went on sinning, but because they accepted Christ, they thought that way uh, they, they would still get salvation or become perfect. Uh, so it's not so cheap. No, it's not just enough to accept, but we have to also show by our behavior, by our desires, that we are perfect. Yeah. 
So that's not so easy. But at the same time, it is easy. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita 7.14, the Ratyaya, material nature, is difficult to overcome, but in the second part of the verse, he says, one who surrenders to me can easily cross beyond it. So it's difficult for those who are crooked, those who want to enjoy separately from the Lord. But for the devotees, it's easy. Just do what Krishna wants. What is the difficulty? Prabhupada used to say like that, right? What is the difficulty? Who wrote a book called that? Shruti Kirti wrote a book. What is the difficulty? Because Prabhupada was always saying, what is the difficulty? There's no difficulty. We just make the difficulty because of our obstinate, stubborn attachment to false ego. But actually, there's no difficulty. Okay, any questions? I'll do another verse. <clears throat> Fifty-five. Esha prakriti sangena purushasya viparya yaha asit saeva nat chirat isa sangat viliyate. Translation. Since the living entity is associated with material nature, he is in an awkward position. But if in the human form of life he is taught how to associate with the Supreme Personality of Godhead or his devotee, this position can be overcome. But it's very important that we have to admit we're in an awkward position. Most people can't do that. Prabhupada gives the example, the old man is dying, he's being fed through the veins, somebody's collecting his stool and urine, but you ask him, how are you? I'm okay. Uh, nobody likes to admit that we're in, an, we're in an awkward position due to pride, due to false ego. Uh, and so we remain in the material world. But if we can admit that we're in an awkward position, then we can take the medicine required to cure us from this awkward position. So this is the Krishna conscious movement. It's offering everyone opportunity to qualify to enter the spiritual world. And whether it doesn't matter, whether what birth we've taken, what gender we have, anybody can become perfect by following this process. And the process is not so difficult. Prophet sometimes said, I'm only asking you to give up poison, illicit sex, intoxication, gambling. These things are poison. And the positive activity of chanting Hare Krishna becomes more and more joyful as we go deeper into it. Uh, we'll find that it brings real life and happiness. Therefore, Prophet would always say, chant Hare Krishna and be happy. Support. The word prakriti means material nature, and purusha may also refer to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. <clears throat> if one wants to continue his association with prakriti, the female energy of Krishna, and be separated from Krishna by the illusion that he is able to enjoy prakriti, he must continue in his conditional life. This is the test. <coughs> we think we can enjoy material life. If we adjust it this way, that way, have the right persons in our life, then we'll be happy. But no, it's not possible. We're not fit to be the enjoyer. We're giving the example right of the hand. The hand is not, uh, you can say, equipped to enjoy the food or to digest it. So it has to cooperate with the whole body. It brings the food in the mouth. And then the tongue and, uh, can enjoy it and the belly can digest it. So this is the process. We have to cooperate with Krishna and then we'll find everything that we require will be provided for us. We don't have to look for pleasure. It comes automatically. Uh, because the soul is by constitution joyful. So as we get in harmony with our real self, we'll feel happy in any circumstance. Even there's some reversal, we won't be disturbed. Rather, it, will become, it can be impetus for us to become more Krishna conscious. The verse is there that if we're able to take any situation as coming from the Lord for our purification, then we can move in this world without any anxiety. Because we're equipped to tolerate and see Krishna's hand in everything. 
that he's bringing us to him uh, by on the positive side by playing his flute on the negative side by his agent Maya kicking us so in this way everything becomes impetus to our advancement in Krishna consciousness uh, no more depression. Oh, this happened to me. Now I'm discouraged. Now I'm dispersed. No. When we have this vision that everything is being arranged by the Lord, then everything can be used in the Lord's service and can give us impetus to become more Krishna conscious. So this is wanted. We have that vision. Therefore, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu emphasized the point of being tolerant more than a tree. Because we're able to tolerate and uh, with the clear vision, continue our Krishna consciousness, even if there's so many difficulties there. And there will be difficulties. Even the Pandas had to see so many difficulties. They were intimate associates of Krishna, but they still had to undergo so many tribulations. So we shouldn't expect that, that they'll be just uh, you know perfect everything for us. No, we'll have to overcome these difficulties. That'll be the test that we're really a devotee that we can pass these difficulties without giving up on Krishna and saying, oh, this is, this is not working. It's not working for people who are self-centered. But for the devotee, everything is conducive for his advancing. Is that point clear? And sometimes if people come to me, I, like I, the other day, a few days ago, Lady came, immediately, I never met her before. Immediately she comes in my room, she starts crying. Who's this lady coming in my room crying? Uh, yeah, she, and she goes on this whole sad story about this and that. And that. But you know, they, we have to get past that state. We have to chant Hare Krishna, not poor me, poor me. That mantra is very easy to come to, uh, for us to chant. Oh, poor me, poor me. No, that's not, that won't give us the desired result. We have to think, because then we're blaming God. Ultimately, he's the controller. So if something uh, that we feel is unfair happened to us, that means it's God's fault. So the devotee the doesn't think like that. He doesn't blame God for his karma. We have to think, we have to understand. It's not just wishful thinking. We have to understand the reality is I'm having trouble because of my Sinful life is catching up with me. Maybe I didn't do it just today, but we should know that the sins take some time to fructify, and now we're suffering because of what something we did maybe three lifetimes ago. And we don't see it, so we think, poor me, poor me. It's not fair. Uh, but we have to get past that sentimental stage and accept it. Uh, I would give the example, be courageous, like a Bengali mother or a British soldier. Sometimes. And just tolerate and go on. And then we'll see that we can, it becomes easier to tolerate and easier to tolerate. And then uh, finally all our bad karma will be finished and, we'll, and our good karma will be finished and then we'll be transcendentally situated. But if we want to enjoy Prakriti, then uh, we have to stay here. If he changes his consciousness, however, and associates with the supreme original person, Purusham Shashvatam, or with his associates, he can get out of the entanglement of material nature, as confirmed in Bhagavad Gita 4.9, karma devyam evam yoveti tatvataha. One must simply understand the supreme person, Krishna, in terms of his form, name, activities, and pastimes. This will keep one always in the association of Krishna. Bhakta deham punar janmanaiti mam eti sojuna. Thus, after giving up his gross material body, one accepts not another gross body, but a spiritual body in which to return home back to Godhead. So, this is an important verse, chapter 4, text 9. Janmakarma chanayivyam evam yoviti tatutaha. Bhakta deham punar janmanaiti mam eti sojuna. No more coming back here. Krishna is offering to all of us, come back to home. Thus, one ends the tribulation caused by his association with the material energy. Same message over and over and over. But we don't, uh, we, we don't it, it's nice 
intellectually, but to apply it every moment is a little difficult. Because we're used to being crybabies. Like we see the child, some children just crying. Mommy, mommy. So the, this is our tendency. Uh, we think this world is all in all, and so we feel awkward or some disturbance, then we cry. Poor me, poor me. <clears throat> in summary, the living entity is an eternal servant of God. But he comes to the material world and is bound by material conditions because of his desire to lord it over matter. Liberation means giving up this false consciousness and reviving one's original service to the Lord. This return to one's original life is called mukti, as confirmed in the Srimad Bhagavatam, mukti hitvanyata rupam svarupena vyavasistiti. So everything is very clear. He's saying, in summary, this is the difficulty. What's happened? And nobody walking on the street understands this philosophy. Therefore, you can see how important our work is to preach this message that can bring real uh, solace to the afflicted humanity. And they're certainly afflicted. Uh, that we can see every day, daily, how much they're so-called enjoying and then suffering. I gave the example I probably was walking on the uh, shore of a lake and there was a man fishing and just as Prabhupada and a party came there, he caught this big fish and he was, he was smiling and he turned around uh, to show the Prabhupada and the devotees that he had this big fish. And Prabhupada said, yes, enjoy, enjoy. Then a few steps more, he said, and then suffer, suffer. So whatever little enjoyment, you see young people are out there enjoying, you see them on Harinam, right? They're smiling and running and... Uh, but it's just the other side of the suffering. Sweet 16 and bitter 60s. They, they can't avoid the, uh, you can say, it's suffering from other living entities, from one's own mind and body, and from the nature. Three kinds of suffering, Adidaivak, Adibotik, Adiyatmak. They're coming to us. If we, if we learn how to tolerate and accept it and, and still remain Krishna conscious, even in that condition, then uh, our future is very bright. If we succumb to that uh, false narrative that we're, uh, we're victims, everybody's thinking they're victims, then we, we remain a victim, we remain in the material world. Uh, maybe in the next life you get a better situation, but you're not getting out of the material world. So we want to go back home, back to Godhead, and Prabhupada is giving us a very clear understanding why and how we can go back to Godhead. Beginning by tolerating our own suffering condition instead of blaming God. The tendency is there. We blame something other than ourselves. But no, we have to look at ourselves and realize that it's our uh, misuse of independence that has brought this all about. And by proper use of independence, we can fully qualify to go back to Godhead. This one verse, chapter 4, text 9. Krishna is offering us John Makarma Chamedivan. If we understand what? That Krishna's activities, his birth, like we do, uh, celebrate Janmashtami, his birth and his activities are all spiritual. Then we meditate on those activities. We get attracted to those activities. Then uh, we can remember Krishna even at the moment of death even at the most difficult times. So this is our challenge for ourselves. And of course, uh, we want to share this opportunity with others. This is the preaching spirit. So the train moves on two tracks, prachar-nachar, practicing and preaching. In the morning, first we practice, and then we preach. Later in the day, we sell books. I, I'm happy to hear that, see that the, the mood to sell books is here. Maharaj, you're giving him that inspiration? I'm very here. But you have your representatives here. I'm very here. And I'm here, when I'm here, now, now I'm, I'm depriving you a chance to speak to your disciples. I'm enjoying significant. Very good.
Okay, any questions? What's your name again? Nimai Satsuki. Yeah, we were all singing Nimai, you know. <laughs> because you have a good, you're a good singer, right? You are talking about how to tolerate sufferings. Uh, how do we also tolerate some good fortune that may come? Yeah, that day? also. We can get carried away by euphoria of some kind and think, now I'm happy in this world. Be, well, the, question, the, the, the answer is to see things as they are. Second class devotee, he's supposed to be able to see things as they are. So as they, we're getting, when the happiness comes, when some good condition comes, we can think, yes, this is now I'm using up my good karma. This is my good karma, okay. But I don't become, you know, proud of it and thinking, oh, I'm better than everybody else because I have good karma. This is the problem with good karma. The rich people, they can't come and put their head on the ground and bow before the deity because they think, oh, what is this? I'm a very fortunate person. I, I have all this money and this good uh, karma, but how long does it last? And then the next life, what do they have? Oh, that's not there. To, it's to, decided by higher authorities. So we have to, yes, when we're, when we're getting some good situation, we should sit and think, yeah, this is the mercy of Krishna. Uh, and a bad situation, this is my fault. That way we can remain steady. The key is nishta. We want to be steady. Nishta means steady. No more being... So in English we have a word, you stupid jerk. Jerk. What does that mean? Jerk. It means he's being pulled here, this way, this way. He's a jerk. So we're all jerks because we're not steady. We're not nishta. So we're being jerked by the material nature. The devotee is never the guru, Prabhupada, we saw it. He means uh, he can't be jerked. He can't be tilted because he's, he's settled. He's, he's grave. He knows his position. No one can uh, disturb him. Guru means heavy. Heavy in the sense that he can't be turned over. Where a cotton swab is light, it can be turned. So we have to become heavy like that. Heavy in dira tachin amoyati. That word is used, dira. We have to be dira when we're going through this cycle of uh, old age, disease, death. We're going to go through it. If we can be sober, even at the time of death, then uh, our future is very bright. Is that right? Anyone else? Uh, Maharaj, it said that, like, uh, as you said, uh, we are supposed to go back to Godhead as uh, fast as possible. Uh, so, but actually it is also said that for a de pure devotee, it doesn't matter, like... Uh, yeah, that's okay. To, We're not pure devotees. You can, you can desire to go back to Godhead. Uh, like the material world, like... If he is in material world or he is in spiritual world. Yeah, that's a very advanced position. Prabhupada was asked that. Can we desire to go back to God? And he said yes. Some people may not go because they they have a higher taste, they want to. But that's okay. We can desire to go back to Godhead. Then let Krishna decide where we go at the time of death. Generally it's stated that we don't go back to Godhead the first life. We go to where Krishna is having pastimes in the material world. You heard that, Mark? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Anyone else? Then we'll stop here. Bhagavatam ki. Yeah. Yeah. Prabhupada ki. Yeah.